Well, welcome again to Abundant Life Church Online. We're so glad that you took the time to join us today. Um, we are continuing our series called Encountering Easter. And remember the big point, and, and first of all, I know what you might be thinking, but Easter is past, but we are going to continue um, just looking at a few characters that... Um, we're a part of the Easter story. And, and remembering, too, that our big idea, our big point, is that encountering Easter is encountering Jesus. I want to say that again. Encountering Easter is encountering Jesus. And so the person that we want to look at today who had an encounter with Jesus is the Apostle John. And this is... Um, some verses that are written um, about the Apostle John uh, during Jesus' crucifixion, uh, when Jesus was on the cross. This is what it says in John chapter 19, verses 26 to 27. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Dear woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, he said, here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his home. Now, what's very interesting to note and to kind of um, recognize in, in all the Gospels, and when I say all the Gospels, this is referring to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, uh, the first four books of the New Testament. And, and they, of, of the gospel writers, um, John is the only one who mentions that Mary, who was Jesus' um, earthly mother, was present um, at the time of Jesus' crucifixion. And John is the only one that, that we know that is mentioned in any of the Gospels, uh, that was present. So only one out of the twelve, and that was John, who was present um, at Jesus' crucifixion. So John kind of gives this shout out to Mary, the mother of Jesus, as, the, as being there. And also we recognize that John was probably the only disciple who was accounted for that was there when Jesus was crucified. 
So you have them and they were probably in close proximity. They were probably close to each other because uh, they knew each other. They knew each other very well. And so they would have been comforting each other. They would have been together. And what's so fascinating, I don't, I don't know about you, but when I read the Bible and I... And, and I see these little, little things that kind of jump off the page. It's just fascinating to me. It's just so amazing. And it says that while well, Jesus is he's dying on the cross. Remember those verses that we read in John 19. Uh, Jesus wasn't sitting down having a conversation. Jesus wasn't, you know, they weren't having dinner together. Jesus was, was hanging on the cross blows my mind and he looks down and and he notices his mom and and remember that Jesus was the firstborn um, to Mary and Joseph and and there would have been this um, responsibility that he would have felt that he had to make sure that his mom was taken care of that he is concerned that she has a place to live, that she will have food to eat. Because at this time in the story, there probably um, Mary was a widow. Joseph, I think, had already passed on by this time. And so Mary is a widow. And Jesus is making sure that there is someone that can take care of his mom. And, and I think also what you have to note is that Mary would have been the one that would have taken care of Jesus as a boy. You know, anytime he was running and he, he fell and tripped or he needed a hug or he had bruises or scrapes or, you know, meals like boys like to eat. I, I know I have two boys and they love eating. So... I'm sure he had a big appetite and Mary was the one that, that took care of him. And so there's this kind of role reversal now that's taking place that Jesus is now the one that is concerned and is looking after his mom. And he looks down and he also sees that John is there. And he, he kind of, you know, quickly says these two would be a good fit for each other. And so he, he, he's, he looks to John and he says, John, you are now going to be um, the one that's going to take care of my mom. It's, it's like this. John is taking Jesus' place as the, as the provider, the earthly provider for Mary. Talk about big shoes to fill, like you're filling in for Jesus. But it's it's also must be a huge compliment to John that Jesus would say, John, you can do this. You are the guy to take care of, of my mom. And so it says in the verses that we read that from that time on, this disciple John took Mary into his home. It was a done deal. He was like, Jesus, absolutely I will do it. And and as I was reading these verses, I got thinking about my own mom. And and you know, as she got older and and she was uh, beginning to age, and especially when she was um, battling cancer, is there's kind of this role reversal that does take place. And you start to take on a different role as her son. I, I remember there'd be times that my mom would, would call me and say, you know, our, our pipe is dripping. Um, can you come over and help us? Uh, you know, uh, we can't get out of our driveway. Could you help us with shoveling? And, and then you would go over and, and you would see they need a few groceries and you'd go pick up some groceries or or you'd mow their lawn, or there was just lots of different things that you kind of took on as your, as my mom got older. My role changed as her son, who was now kind of taking care of her. 
providing for her. And, and I also got to thinking as when I was a kid and I was an adventurous and I was a curious boy and, and that meant that I got into some trouble and my mom always had my back, even in the times when she knew I was in the wrong, but she would stand up for me and, and, and I fell a lot probably because I would climb up trees and jump out of them. But there was many times I would be at the emergency room getting stitches. And my mom took care of me. She encouraged me. And and in, in this kind of Jesus final moments as he's on the cross, um, he knows his death is very near. And... And he's making these plans for his mom and this disciple, John. He's bringing them together. And it's we see this nurturing and compassionate side of Jesus. That even as he's in extreme agony and pain and suffering, he is still showing his nurturing and compassionate side. And how does this change your perspective of Jesus? How do, do you look at him differently now when you read this kind of a story about Jesus? Does this change your perspective about who Jesus is? Does, does it change how you look at Jesus, how you think about him? See, what's interesting to know is that John had encountered Jesus. And they actually spent a a great deal of time together. John was was one of the 12 disciples. And and he traveled around with Jesus for probably close to three years. They spent time together. They ate together. they, they, They lived together. They did life together. They journeyed together. So John would have known Jesus. They would have spent a great amount of time together. There would have been a strong relationship. In fact, Jesus often referred to John as the disciple whom he loved. Um, John had a special place in Jesus' heart. They really must have got along really well. Obviously for him to choose as the one to take care of his mom. But this encounter that, that we read about, this was, this was intimate. This was personal. Even though Jesus was on the cross, it was like they were all just on their own little conversation. Intimate, little, and personal. Because what we need to understand and recognize about what Jesus did is that Jesus is showing that he truly cares for all people. Let me say this again, in case you need to hear this. Jesus truly cares for all people. So let me ask you, have you felt the love and care from Jesus? Have you been able to be a participant in in receiving Jesus' love and care? Just before I go, I just, I want to, I want to pray for you and I want to pray that that you would indeed encounter Jesus this week so let me just pray Lord I just pray for each person that is watching this whether they're young or old whether they are new Christians whether they are just checking out what is church what is Jesus all about or they've been long-term faithful devoted followers of you, I pray that they would encounter you, Jesus, as the one that is nurturing and compassionate and loving and caring. May may they they, um, observe that in their own lives. May they have a fresh encounter of this Jesus this week. God, I pray that you would show yourself real to them and just everyday circumstances that they're going through. And I ask this, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, 
I just, would you be interested in, in encountering and learning more about Jesus? Or maybe you would say, I have questions about Jesus. I have questions about the church, about the Bible. What, what is this all about? Well, then may I suggest that you would join our Alpha Online. This is something that is going to be starting up and in the month of May. Our first one is going to be um, the first week, the first Tuesday in May. I believe it's May the 3rd. And this is going to be every Tuesday night for the months of May and June. It's going to be at 7.30. It's going to be done through a Zoom platform. And, and if this is something that interests you, please consider joining our, our Alpha Online. If you need more information, you can email Pastor Dan at AbundantLifePastorDan at gmail.com. And we'd love to be able to, to host you for our Alpha Online. But thank you again for taking the time to watch Abundant Life Church Online. And this week, may you passionately worship Jesus. May you wholeheartedly follow Jesus. May you urgently share Jesus. And may you lovingly lead others to Jesus. Amen.